Greetings from the GNU Linux Users Group. Welcome to the last video of this reverse engineering series. Over the course of all the previous videos, we analyzed the static assembly outputs of binaries and tried to understand the code logic from them. But not a single one of them required us to run the program while debugging it. In this video, we will see a different type of analysis in which we debug the binaries during their runtime. Moreover, we will also see a technique known as patching which we can use to modify the behavior of binaries. So let's not waste any more time and get into solving our level 4. So now let's try out our level 4. As you can see that this program is giving us some options. Let's enter option 0. Ok, so it's asking for some number from us. Let's enter any random number. Ok, so it prints the message try again. Let's try out option 1. It just does nothing and prints the counter plus plus message on the screen. So we don't know what this program is actually doing. Let's load the program in Ghidra and see what's the program logic behind this. Now just like in our previous video, we find the nocap function that is running this level. And we can see over here that it is printing this option menu that we saw while playing. Now if we see carefully, it's also taking our input through the scanf call and storing the data in this local C variable. This data over here is nothing just but the format string used to specify that this local C variable is containing an integer. But what is this line over here doing? Let's see. Ghidra represents a function call through this code pointer operator if the function addresses are pointed by some local variables. But here we can see that dereferencing is done two times which should mean this data over here is a pointer to a function address or more precisely a index over a particular array of function addresses. And as we know from our previous encounter with this type of lines, we know that this statement is making the program traverse this func's address by a memory offset of 8. This means this func's data must be holding all those addresses. Let's check what it contains. Now if we see over here in this function, this func's is containing the address of 4 different functions separated by an offset value of 8. Starting off with this a function, which if we analyze, we can see was running while we give the input 0 as it is printing this string. But before analyzing it further, let's go back. Now we saw our input was multiplied with 8 and added to this func value. So on choosing option 0, this function address at the 0 offset was called. So thinking in that way, this function b is running when you chose the option 1 and this c is running when you chose the option 2. But what is this function d doing at the 24th offset? Let's ignore it for now and start off by analyzing the a function. We can see that this function after taking our input in this local 10 variable is comparing it with this data hack and if both of them are unequal it's printing this string which we saw and if they are equal it's printing nice but where's the flag okay so there must be a flag in this program right but why it is since this level is not giving us any flag or whatsoever we'll not waste our time on this and let's jump on to our next function if we see this b function, we can see that it's not containing anything of any use to us. It just prints this string and modifies the value of these two variables. So without wasting any time, let's go to our c function. The last option left for us is this function d. And if we think logically, the address of d is at an offset of 24. So giving an input of 3 which will be multiplied with 8 will produce this offset and may trigger this function. Let's try it out. What? Nothing happened. But why? Something must have happened. Let's go back to our d function in Ghidra. Ok, so if we see here properly, this function is comparing some variable m with this hex value. which turns out to be the decimal 20 and it's printing something only when both of them are equal. Ok, so we can analyze how m is changing in the program but we have an easier way. Let's try out dynamic analysis and open this program in GDB. 
Now we have loaded our program in GDB and if you know basic GDB commands you can follow along. Or I would recommend watching our pawn playlist where we have already gone through them. So now let's set up a breakpoint at main and run the program. Now let us also set up a breakpoint at D which will trigger if 3 is given as an input in the no cap level. Let's continue. Ok, so we can see we are stopped in our second breakpoint. This means our D function is executed. But instead of getting exited from the program without printing anything, we are stopped because of this breakpoint. Let's see the disassembled output of this function first. So there's a bunch of assembly, but as you can see over here in this line, the value of the EX register is compared with this hex value 14. And if we remember properly, in GDB we saw M was compared with hex 14. So this is probably the line responsible for doing so. Let us set up a breakpoint over here too. Let's continue. Ok, so we are now at a point before the execution of this CMP statement. So let us see what does this EX register contain. As you can see that this EX or RX register contains the value 0. That's why our program was exiting every time without doing anything because 0 is not equal to 20, right? But what we can do is set the contents of this RX register to 20, like this. Now let's continue. And as you can see, our flag gets printed easily. This is the benefit of dynamic analysis, where we can modify and analyze values during the runtime. But there's another way we can approach this solution known as binary patching in which we can change the behavior or more precisely the assembly code of a binary. And as we saw initially the value of m was 0 so we can change this assembly statement where instead of equating m with 20 it equates it with 0. So on a first try of option 3 our flag gets printed. We can do it like this. Let's set it to 0. Now let's export our passed out binary. Choose as ELF.
ओके नाउ लेट्स सी आवर पेस्ट आउट बाइनरी नाउ लेट्स एक्सपोर्ट आवर प्रोग्राम सो एज यू कैन सी हियर वी हैव चूजन द फॉर्मेट एस ई एल एफ एंड वी कैन चूज अ सुइटेबल लोकेशन फॉर हायर द आवर फाइल एंड वी कैन चूज अ सुइटेबल लोकेशन हायर आवर फाइल विल बी एक्सपोर्टेड टू Now let's export. Now let's export it. Now let's run our patched binary. Okay, as you can see, we got the permission denied. Let's give it the proper permissions to be executable. Now let's run it again. As you can see, on entering the option three, the flag gets printed, and we successfully modified the program for anyone who wants to exploit it but doesn't know dynamic analysis. With this, we complete our today's video. Again, you can try out the binary from the GitHub repo, whose link has been given in the description. Thank you for watching. Back from the dead. Oh, 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 oh,